Good evening, everyone. My name is Elizabeth, the Education Coordinator for Marlene's Market and Deli. Tonight's special guest that we have with us is Shanna Rivera, Rivera, Certified Thermography Technician, and Dr. Linda Huxtable, Naturopathic Doctor. And they are speaking on a very important topic, detoxing and thriving medical thermography screening and we are just so grateful anytime we get the chance to have you both to share your knowledge knowledge and expertise and um so thanks for being here thanks so much for having us anytime so um um welcome to take the live stream floor okay thanks elizabeth so everybody, hello, my name is Shanna Rivera and um, my company's name is Flow Well. And tonight we're gonna talk about detoxing and thriving with medical thermography. And I asked um, one of my mentors and, and my doctor, Dr. Linda Huxtable to be on with us tonight because she's, she's a wealth of knowledge. I love learning from her and I'm so thankful that you're able to be on with us tonight, Dr. Huxtable. Oh, thank you so much. It's my pleasure. You're welcome. Yeah, so detoxing and thriving. Dr. Huxtable and I have a lot of patients who utilize medical thermography to analyze their health or uh, work on symptoms that they're having in their body. And so tonight we're just going to tie together, you know, once you get your report back, what do you do with it? And what can it, what can you learn from your ther medical thermography screening? And most of us could benefit from detoxing. You know, um, there's so many toxins in our world today that you cannot avoid. So detoxing on a regular basis, is real, it's really important for all of us to know about. And then we don't, we don't just want to detox our body. We want to be thriving. We want to feel amazing. We want to have energy for our daily tasks or for our families, you know, and to have fun. So every one of us should be thriving. And if we're not, we have to figure out why and change that and make it happen. All right. So tonight, um, Dr. Huxtable is going to be up first. And Dr. Huxtable, I'm gonna have you just kind of go through these bullet points and talk about your pra practice procedures. Okay. Uh, thanks, Shanna. Uh, yeah, so mo I would say probably 80% maybe of my uh, patients are uh, teleconferencing patients. Some people that are local or that do live in Florida do come to see me, but most of what I do is done over um, either uh, a Zoom call or FaceTime or um, just a phone call. And that's really how I work. And um, Shanna and I have worked together for many years because I've done thermography for many, many years. <laughs> I think I was probably one of the earliest adopters of thermography uh, in my clinics in Atlanta, we started doing them when I've, I've saved some of the paper images and looked back on them. And they're actually more like cartoons. I don't know what in the heck we thought we were seeing, but the, it's changed so much and it's so much better. It's a really good medical tool now and it allows me to see patients from all over the place and to really focus in on where the important hyperthermic areas or where the problems are with the patient without really having to have them in the office. Um, it's, it's okay to, to be in an office. There's nothing wrong with that. However, many of the people that we, cho we choose to work with are not local and they're all over the place and they're, Really, I have found almost no contraindications to uh, using people in a community to help me and to make it to to get to get people to help be part of the team to help the patients that we're talking about. So, um, one of the things that I've been working on forever is educating people about breast implants. Breast. <laughs> 
so many people have breast implants and most of them don't even know that there is a a problem with them and that they they produce a lot of mold they produce their the the silicone does not stay within the breast implant whether it's a saline or whether it's a, a silicone implant it leaks out we have a patient um, a little bit later that it is here to share with us about her recent experience with um, getting breast implants removed called an end block procedure. And in the end block procedure, which is the proper procedure for removing Im breast implants, we take the capsule that the body creates around the breast implant to protect you from the leaching of the silicone and the mold and the bacteria bacteria and all everything that that the implants impart to your system the body tries to protect you against that and it will create a a capsule around that implant which has to be removed when you get the implant out and it's called an n block e n b l o c procedure so if there's anybody out there listening we have a lot of information on um breast illness, uh, breast implant illness groups, and how you can really educate yourself about them. I'm working with Dr. Campbell now. He's written a hundred papers. He says that every single breast implant creates mycotoxins, which are the bullet mold is the gun. Mycotoxins are the bullet. Mycotoxins are what uh, they find in the breast implants. And um, they, it goes through your whole system. We actually do really advanced testing called antibody testing to see if you have been exposed to mold. And Dr. Huxville, can I ask you a question? Mm -hmm. So that means women with breast implants, even if they're getting regular anatomical screenings like mammograms or ultrasounds, um, those tests may not show things like microtoxins or mold um, or even, you know, any signs of leakage. It doesn't, they don't show it. It's very rare that it will show. Now it may show um, leakage as, as the breast implant deflates as the silicone goes through the body, but uh, it is very hard to get the silicone out to detox from silicone. It will not show toxins like mycotoxins like mold. It will not show most of what grows in the breast implants and makes the bodies toxic. You know, one of the things we see a lot of is edema. We, we see a lot of problems for, from breast implants and it really shocks me that so many doctors out there don't know of the problems and um, it takes education and it takes time. And once they become convinced and once they see the tre tremendous amount of information and the studies that have been done on breast implant illness, they, they don't even give their pay. It becomes mandatory to get the breast implants out. Like the root canals in the mouth, a patient isn't going to get better if you have a focal infection, which can be a breast implant, it can be a root canal, it can be a scar, it can be a virus. It can be any kind of infection that is affecting the entire uh, body and creating this imbalance. You never reach this place where your body can get better because so many of these focal infections are not seen like breast implant illness. When, I, when, when patients get their breast implants out, it's pretty extraordinary about what 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 they'll tell me or what they'll experience what they'll explain to me about um holding them in their hands and realizing the stress that it is putting on their structure to have something that is not of them in their body and that they're carrying around and that they have edema in the face they have edema in the chest they have edema in the arms and they say you know it's the first time that that edema has really left. Um, breast implant illness is a real thing. It's a real disease. It's a real problem. And everybody who has breast implants is going to 
be affected on some level, some people a lot more than others, but you are going to be affected by it. Could you and, define edema? And, and just in case anyone doesn't really know exactly what that is. Yeah, edema is uh, extracellular uh, fluid. So you want your cells to be plump like raisins. You want them to be hydrated. And when there's a uh, an aberrant angle, a refractory angle, the, 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 the fluid, instead of going into the cells where it can detox you and can help you, um, it's, it's, it's in the, it's in the, it's in the extracellular space. So it look, people look like, this is probably not a good analogy, but they look like, you know, the Pillsbury Doughboy, they get this extracellular fluid everywhere. And with breast infections, it's often in the face and the neck and the chest and the upper arms, we see it. Okay. So, um, we talk a lot about holistic biological dentistry, biological dentists, and the difference between a biological dentist who is trained to understand the connection between what you put in the mouth and the rest of the body. And often we don't, aren't able to explain to patients until they actually see the hyperthermia. You know, when patients have a problem with the thyroid, the first thing that they'll tell me is, oh, my mother is hypothyroid. She has Hashimoto's, my aunts. My... And yeah, they all have the same thing. It doesn't mean that it's genetic. 2% of illnesses is genetic. Um, you, are, you, you, you dictate the way that your genes express themselves through number one diet and also through lifestyle and environment. So it's the choices you make. It's what you put into your mouth. And when people see the thermography, they all of a sudden it becomes real and they identify They we can see the, the line of, of infection draining down the chin and, to the, and knocking the thyroid out, going into the breast. We see it, we see it. And it, it's, it's, it becomes extremely real and the patient becomes engaged on a level that they were not engaged on before with their wellness, with their their journey. I can't believe it's only 2%, you know, and so many people are, they really harp on, oh, my family doesn't have any has history. So I'm all set, you know, and it's not the case. Yeah. It, it happens even in the cells, the cells, uh, if you don't have the right micronutrients, your, your, your actual cells cannot detox they can't detox it and they're they're so responsible for detoxification uh, cell regulation through genetic expression your cells are your cells are so just think about that i listened to a webinar that i'm still trying to process the other day it was a three-hour webinar on the mitochondria and you know i really teach people that they have mitochondria, but I learned, we know so much more than we knew. And we know that at least 50% of every single one of our cells is filled with mitochondria. So as I always have said, if your, mit if your mitochondria ain't happy, ain't nobody's going to be happy <laughs> or something like that. But it's really true. And we know so much more about about how about mitochondrial biogenesis or or causing the mitochondria to get on board with their jobs and one of them is cell regulation they communicate with the with the human cells and tell them what to do and they produce almost all of the energy necessary for every kind of um, cellular function everything if you don't have mitochondria you don't have any you're not you're, you've got all kinds of symptoms. And, you know, we see more and more people who are so sensitive to everything because they have mast cell activation and it's the mitochondria. So we do a lot of custom, we don't do a lot. We use very targeted tests to identify 
functional disturbances, including the mitochondria, including uh, including uh, IgG, IgE testing for um, mycotoxins, including very good tests for heavy metals. 98% of the tests out there are not any good. They're just not any good. I know because I've used them all. And we do the customized functional testing, including medical thermography to because it gives us such a great overview of what's going on with that body and we see improvement and it helps me to convince people that they need to do certain things to eliminate these patterns of hyperthermia and of suspicious patterns of vascularity and of all kinds of things before they get a chronic disease. I love how you have, you know, the tests that you use and that you educate your patients why they need to start with certain tests. Um, I think I myself have done four different tests with you, including thermography, and each one teaches me so much about what's going on with my health. Um, and I love what you said earlier about really getting the patient involved with their own health journey as they look at their medical thermography or these other tests, you know, that to me are crystal clear that lifestyle changes are warranted or keep doing what you're doing. It's working, you know? Yeah. If you just go to a doctor and, and they tell you, well, uh, your C-reactive protein is high or your homocysteine is high you're really not going to learn much. I mean, what can they spend with you three minutes? And if you have, if you're paying insurance and they can spend about three minutes with you. And so, and they can't, they're, they're penalized if they spend more. I don't know what you can learn in three minutes. <laughs> I mean, it takes, you're your best doctor. Each patient has so many decisions to make and so many different ways to spend their money. And uh, yeah, I wanna be good steward of your money and I wanna help you to learn and I wanna help you to be on this journey that you're on that is gonna be for the rest of your life and you're gonna affect so many more people. I mean, every single person that all of us talk to about thermography or about breast implants, just think of what we're spreading in the world. It's, it's a great honor to be in this profession. I'm so proud of so many of my patients who, you know, it's like one after the other. I feel like I have the same conversations with people all the time, but so many of them are their own health advocates and that they take into consideration what their doctor has to say or their nutritionist or chiropractor, acupuncturist, and it's like, then they get to decide what's working or what's not. Do they want to try something new or, you know, so there's, there's just a lot out there for sure. Yeah. And unfortunately, a lot of people use Dr. Google <laughs> and they don't go to PubMed.gov or look at the studies. So a lot of information. You can find anything you want on the internet, anything. And so be, be very aware that there's good information and there's information that's not so good. And we see so much of it. We see just so much more bad information and myths that people have uh, and not base it on, not base their decisions on science, but base it on uh, total myth, total misbelief, and uh, that's unfortunate. Agreed. Okay, so did we have a do? Did, did we have another slide? We do. Um, so next up is thermography. Um, so what is medical thermography? It is infrared imaging of your body. This bottom right picture here um, is a great representation of a bre uh, anterior breast image. 
So when we look at the breasts, we want to see symmetry. You know, we don't want to see a big hot spot on one side. So this woman's left breast has a really big yellow and red spot, and we don't see that on the right. So that would warrant further investigation with her doctor. It could be an anatomical test. It could be blood work, could be a physical examination, but whatever the case is, if you see a hot spot, you wanna check it out further. And it doesn't necessarily mean it's cancer. Uh, more often than not, it is not. And it's either toxic buildup or hormonal. And it, when that's the case, people need to figure out what they can do to detox their body or analyze their hormones and figure out how to reduce that heat signature from one scan to the next. Because when you have inflammation fester in one spot for years or sometimes even decades, then cancer can form. And so for me, the, the name of the game is detox the body, reduce inflammation, improve circulation. And when patients do certain things, um, we see hot spots go away. And then we see areas that were too cold, like her breasts here are magenta. And that's a much colder color on this rainbow palette scale here, representing colder temperatures. And so I'm, I'm sure she could benefit from improving her circulation as well, which you can do by working out with body work, massage. Um, so there's, there's a lot that we see just from one picture. And then when we see inflammation in the breast, we want to know, well, where is it coming from? You know, um, and you can sort of see a pathway here. You see the clavicle area looks red hot and we're gonna look um, up above at a patient's mouth to see, is it draining down from the mouth? Is it related to her dental work? And to me, it looks like there's a pathway then on both sides of yellow here, right? Coming right down towards the breast area. Only on the left, it goes down here. And, and to me, it looks like it's pooling here in this spot and then continues on down to the left breast. And we see people who get themselves dental work, usually with a holistic biological dentist. We see them clear up the dental work. And then when they come back, um, we see either the neck has reduced in, you know, the mouth and the neck has reduced in heat. And then usually over long periods of time, then we can even see the chest into the breast decreased as well. It just depends on a patient's efforts, how much detoxing they do from one scan to the next. You know, for some people we're giving them 10 to 20 recommendations based on the first thermography because so many adults today, we just don't take care of ourselves as we're meant to. Um, I even started a full body detox program that emphasizes diet, exercise, detoxing, de-stressing, and sleep quality. So if every adult doesn't get five stars in all of those categories, then they could show abnormal heat signatures. And most adults do not get five stars in all those categories because we're busy people, right? We, um, we have friends, we have family, we have to work, we want to do fun things out of work, and it just gets really busy. And so all those areas of our health can, can lack, but sometimes when you see the thermography, it helps you to change your focus back to yourself and figuring out how you can help yourself to really thrive. So let's see, medical thermography is possible cancer detection that might save your life. Or if you refer someone for thermography, you might help save someone else's life. I was thinking about stats earlier when Dr. Huxtable mentioned that only 2% of diseases are related to genes. And um, there's other stats that stick out in my mind from other presentations that I've done, such as 80% uh, of breast cancer patients don't have any family history. So that means everybody needs a safe screening tool to, to check themselves out. Um, and then I recently did a continuing education class for thermography. We do one every year. And one of our other BTI technicians, Patricia, uh, she's in New York. She presented and, and one of the stats that she told me about that I did not know was that eight out of 10 breast cancers that are 
diagnosed are from environmental toxins. So that's really high. That means, you know, I'm, I'm kind of a nut about not eating from plastic um, and eating organic. And it's really hard for me to go out to eat or travel because you don't have these options readily available. Um, but I, I do my best to eat that way because so many toxins are in our world today and I'm always detoxing. So I don't want to put them in my mouth if I'm trying to get rid of them from my body based on my thermography and other testing. Um, so really, you know, it seems, it may seem like a lot if you're not already like not using plastic Tupperware or eating organically, but once you make these changes and implement them into your lifestyle, then it just becomes your norm. And then you see things improve, like how you feel or your thermography or other testing, other functional medicine testing, and you just you know you're on the right path. So medical thermography is ideally used for preventing future issues. You know, we want to, um, we harp, Dr. Huxville and myself, we harp on what's going on in the thermography now so much and quite often more so than other doctors or wellness professionals that people talk to because we see a lot of disease. And we know that when people really get engaged with their thermography and are gun ho about treating your body basically on a weekly, daily basis, how it's meant to be treated, we know that people can avoid, people can prevent disease from occurring in the body. Because once somebody gets a diagnosis, it's so difficult to have your body get strong enough to fight it off and then thrive again. So if we can prevent that in, in any person, by explaining the thermography and giving people suggestions on what to do next, we absolutely want to do that because of all the heartache we've heard from patients over the, over the years. So thermography is a very valuable health analysis for your entire body. It's rare, but it stands out in my mind more so. Some of the calls that I get about patients telling me they're scared to get the, their thermography I have patients literally call me, calling me, asking me about thermography, and then they're saying in the same breath, you know, but do I really want to know? Do I really want to know what's going on? Because they're, they're nervous to get their results. And my response is always, it's, it's more valuable information about what's already happening in your body. The only difference is after you get your report, you have insight to what might be standing out, you know, and then you can go ahead and work on it. And then you could potentially prevent disease from ever occurring in your body. It's, it's an incredible uh, screening tool, medical thermography. So absolutely get the entire body done. Um, I recommend it at least once a year. You use your whole body every single day. And I recently had a friend who um, she told me she found a lump in her body and so she really wanted to check out that area and she was debating on getting the full body versus the health screening. The health screening is, it's a valuable screening tool absolutely as well, but it's just, it does not include your extremities, your arms, your hands, your legs, and your feet. And since you use your whole body every single day, I, I think it's so crucial to know what's happening everywhere. Um, you know, I, I, I can't, it baffles me that some people sort of say, you know, oh, I don't need to know the whole body. Like I'll just do the health screening. Like to me, it sounds like, oh, I don't need my arms and my legs. I'll just check the core of my body. But I get it. Everybody's coming from a different place. But in my mind, I've seen so much in the legs and the bottom of the feet. Um, one wrist inflamed over the other, you know, the, the posture analysis alone in the health screening in the full body is a very valuable thing to know about because if somebody's walking around every day and their hips are crooked and you can really see that um, just like how the knees are level or how the hips are level in these images, people need to know this information so that one day they don't sprain an ankle or throw out their back. It's true prevention. All right, so I already harped on the next point, a powerful visual for patients to engage in their health journey. 
Um, medical thermography is also a way to monitor changes in your health, your vascular system, hormones, lymphatic system, and toxic loads. So you cannot diagnose with thermography, but you can definitely work with doctors like Dr. Huxtable who are familiar with this, with our reporting. And then they get to help you determine what additional testing or physical exam might be next based on your thermography results. Thermography is safe at any age. There are no side effects, no radiation, no contrast, no compression. My youngest patient until I scanned my son at two months um, was two years old. And you basically want a child to be able to pose for the camera. And so you can find beneficial information on a child's thermography. Um, and then my oldest patient's 96. So any age, you know, thermography is an excellent health analysis. And um, I learned so much from my patients throughout the years. And so Dr. Huxtable and I were talking about this presentation a couple of weeks ago, and I, we were talking about, you know, detoxing and thriving. And so um, we both thought of a patient who's on with us tonight, and her name's Eva. And we asked her if she would talk about her thermography images. So Eva's on tonight, and Eva, I'm, I'm so proud of you for coming on and telling us about your story and your journey. And I'm really excited to see your next thermography scan. Um, but here's, here's Eva, I'm gonna let you take the floor. Hi everybody, my name is Eva Saras. Um, uh, Shana asked me if I, if I tell my story, um, just really short. Uh, I have uh, breast implants since 1992. I mean, I had, I don't have it anymore. Um, it was uh, a lot of surgeries because there was a problem right away when I uh, got the implant first. And um, last year, I mean, uh, the, my last surgery was in 2018. Um, I got the implants in Europe and they told me that I have to uh, replace them every 10 years or so because uh, they just, uh, if they get old, it can cause problems. So I was uh, doing that, but uh, we moved to America and uh, my last surgery was in 2001. And uh, after 17 years, I thought I, I, I would... I had some pain, I had some issues, so I went and replaced them. And that's when my problem started. Um, I lost most of my hair. Uh, I had many issues and um, I had to check, uh, do mammograms every two years or so. And um, there was no issues with my breast, but other problems like right with my skin, my dry eyes, dry mouth, joint uh, pain, um, the hair loss came and went. It was all, always a problem. Um, and uh, two years ago, um, I had a tooth infection and uh, I thought it was my ear because it was like my head hurt and everything hurt that side. So I went to the doctor and they said there, there was no problem with my ears, but I should go to the dentist. So I went to the dentist and they told me that uh, it's a really bad tooth infection. The tooth has to come out. And uh, I got a tooth implant last uh, January. And um, I changed my diet, I tried to detox, uh, but I still didn't think about the breast implant causing me all the problems. So I, I was um, changing my diet, lost uh, like more than 30 pounds, I felt great. And then my tooth got infected again, the next uh, to the other tooth. 
and I went to the dentist and uh, I thought the implant causing me problems, but uh, I had a root canal to the other two, so I, it had to come out. And uh, first I, the dentist told me to save it if I can. And uh, I got anti antibiotics and that's when uh, uh, my body just gave it up. So I gained back the whole weight I lost that year uh, in two months. And uh, I, felt, I felt really, really sick. And uh, I had sinus infections for four months. Uh, I, I wanted to go to do a mammogram, but I, I was really thinking about it. And I saw the thermography uh, in the newspaper somewhere and it always came up on Facebook and everywhere because I was searching uh, more things about it. So I scheduled the appointment and, and it was a wait list. So it, it was uh, the end of January. And when I went to do the thermography, um, we saw that I had like inflammation everywhere. It was uh, in my in my jaw, in my face, like uh, the sinuses um, go down to my neck, and practically everywhere. So I, um, Doctor Huxtable, told me that the first step is the tooth, the second step it would be the explant, which I had three weeks ago, and everything changed after that. So. I came out from the hospital and it, it was, I could move my neck. Uh, the joint pain was gone. My, my skin started to uh, produce oil again. It wasn't so dry anymore. And uh, ev everything was just so much uh, better uh, right away. And um, this uh, water was on me everywhere. My lymphatic system was clogged. So um, I lost uh, eight pounds since these three weeks. Uh, all the water is gone. My feet is not swollen anymore. So it's it's uh, it was it was a really good thing to do, and uh, I wish I I've done it earlier, but that was the my time, <laughs> I think, and my my. Uh, Explant was uh, scheduled uh, to the end of June, and um, I asked them if 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 they have a cancellation, just call me. So they, I went to the um, went to see the doctor, and uh, next day they called me that they have a cancellation. If I wanted to, I can do it next week, so the following week. So I I had the surgery at the end of April. So this is my story. Uh, I have still have my uh, tooth implant, which is uh, really wanted to come out. It, it's coming out, it, it's moving around. So I have to uh, ex, uh, extract that or have another surgery. I just wanted to get ready for it because it was, it was so much already. So I'm... Um, I'm planning to do the implant. Also. So Eva, Eva you, you're just really brave. Thank you so much for coming on and for sharing your story because you're helping so many people. But one of the things um, Eva did, and we still we still have work. There's just no question, and you're going to get there. You're going to get there. You're going to be you're going to be healed. But one of the things that um, really brought this home to me was the text that you sent me with the actual implants after the uh, M-block procedure, they took pictures of the implants that were not clear anymore. They, they had turned like a goldish color. That's yeah. supposed to happen. And also what the surgeons left who put the breast implants in was they had left junk in the breast that would have I mean, I just, I just tried to think it, it, it was just, it was a horrible, horrible picture. They left 
it looked like blue string and white string. I, it was, yeah. it looked bigger than sutures, but it looked like maybe suture material. I don't know, but it would be like, it would be like hiring a, somebody to come and do your cabinets and then leaving Coke cans and garbage underneath your cabinets behind there. It, it was, it was so stunning to see that. And then to see how um, your results so quickly, we do see very quick results, but not everyone is willing to share them. And we really thank you for sharing your, uh, your journey with us because it is going to, it, it's not going to fall on deaf ears. People are going to take what you say and they're going to listen and they're going to make choices based on hearing the results that you've gotten. So thank you so much for coming. Yeah. Uh, you re recommended a Facebook page for me um, for explant uh, mm -hmm. past or future patients. And I have in three groups on Facebook and th these women are amazing. They just share their uh, journey, their pain, and, and uh, they complaining that nobody is believing them. So this is really yes, a big exactly. part. Exactly. Uh, Shannon, you're on Facebook, right? You know, the, the she's talking about the breast implant illness uh, fa Facebook group. And yes. The pictures are hard to look at, some of them. They are. Before and after. Mm -hmm. It's yes. very hard to look at. Uh, but it's such, it's such a service because th this is not well known. It's not well known. And the surgeons who are doing it, and who are doing it correctly, the end block. I had, in the early days, I had a patient that we had to send back because she did, we didn't even know that she was supposed to have an end block. And she just had the breast implants removed. One of them had, had broken. And um, then she had to go back and have a second surgery to get that capsule out. That's why I spent so much time in the beginning talking about the end block. And there aren't a lot of, of doctors that are doing it. So when we have a patient in an area of the country where we don't have anybody, the ones that are really good are so booked up. It takes a year or more to get in to see them. And so she was very lucky. You were very lucky, Eva, that you found that woman in t the Tampa area, right? Sarasota or Tampa area? Sarasota. It's, it's like five minutes from me. And what's her, it's what's the name of the surgeon? Uh, Dr. Barnett. Barn Barnett. Yes. Yeah, and you were very happy with her, correct? Yes, I was really happy. Uh, she was very nice and explaining everything to me. And they, she works with Dr. Widmeyer, uh, and uh, they are both ama amazing. And yeah, for, so you, you, yes, you said uh, that I. I wanted the same, like you said, uh, mentioned uh, a minute ago, that I just wanted to remove them. I didn't know about M block or X plant, nothing. Uh, I just, I just decided last year that I, I, it, it has, they have to go. I don't know why. It was just an instinct, and um, I already called surgeons in Hungary. I wanted to uh, travel there and do this surgery, just remove them, and. Uh, that's when I went to the thermography and you were talking about. Thank uh, God you didn't do that. Yeah, yes, but Thank everything God. worked out really, really well. It, it, you had good angels. You had good angels looking out for you and, and you got good information. So, yeah, so this is why it's so important to help as many women as we can and to let them know and direct them to the Facebook page or. I think I also sent you out um, other information that I've collected that explains breast implant illness and letting the doctors know because 99.99% of them still don't know. It's so hard. It is yes. so hard. And, yes. and if they're treating cancer or they're treating any kind of degenerative illness, unless they understand mycotoxins and mercury in the mouth and the breast implants, they're not going to get, it's just wasting people's money. And they, we just can't afford to do that. It, it's, it's too tough for people to make livings and to buy the food at the, 
unbelievable and to buy gas it's just unbelievable so there's less money now to allocate toward treatment so you don't want people out there wasting money and having to go through two surgeries right yes oh well thank and you so much I insurance so i had to pay out of pocket but i didn't care <laughs> i wanted to do it yeah you want it done the right way right Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much for having me here. And I hope I could help a little bit. Yes, I hope you can too. And if you get on Facebook and uh, you know, I'm sure you are and tell your story and um, is there a way I, I, we don't wanna put contact information right on this. Elizabeth, we don't wanna put contact. Any, we have our information at the end. so. If um, if anybody has any questions, they could reach out to you or I, Dr. Huxtable. Okay, good. Yeah. Thank you, Eva. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Eva. And it makes me so happy. I got the chills. I almost cried, <laughs> like hearing about how good you feel after you got those surgeries done. And I'm so happy for you. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you so much for being on tonight. Um, okay, so our next slide we're talking about is, is thriving. Um, let's see, so over here on the right, we have two thermographic images. The top one is, you know, showing symmetry, not a lot of inflammation in the breast or up above. Um, and then the bottom image is a patient who has breast cancer in her left breast. So again, you know, we look to see, is there red and yellow on one side of the body that's not on the other? And if there is, that, that would warrant further investigation. So we want to monitor safely with thermography annually or as, as recommended. Um, you can, yeah. sometimes you get um, a three month follow up recommendation if if things if temperatures are really high from one side of the body to the other, it could also be a six month follow up that tells us that the temperature is from the right to the left or vascular patterns are questionable and they want to keep an eye on things and it's our absolute hope to give you some advice that you can follow in that six months turn things around a little bit or at least be stable. And then our interpreting doctors will say, come back in a year. Sometimes things get worse and then they'll say, come back in six months or three months. Um, but that's why we want you to come back as recommended because we wanna make sure ultimately that things are not getting worse. We want you to evaluate the entire body from the bottom of the feet to the top of your head. There's a lot of information that we get from every section of your body thermographically. And it's really great to go over these reports with doctors who are familiar with thermography. At my company, Flowell, um, it's a requirement now to get a doctor's referral so that you have a doctor to go over your report with once you get it back. If you don't have a doctor who's familiar with thermography, I have referrals for you. I could connect you to Dr. Huxtable, one of our expert thermologists. I have other local doctors. You know, there's some great options out there, but if your doctor gives you any static about getting the thermography, they're probably not the best doctor to go over this report with if you choose to get this to analyze your health. Um, you know, and as Dr. Huxtable was saying, we don't want to waste our time and money and resources. So um, our interpreting company has actually, in the last year, they made it a new requirement that I have to interview new doctors. So any new doctor to me who has a referring patient, I call them up, I ask them if they're, how familiar they are with medical thermography and if they'd like to go over a sample report with me or their patient's report because my interpreting company does not want doctors um, basically uh, signing a referral form, taking liability for the results of these thermography uh, reports if they're not truly gonna learn about them and go over it with the patient. And so I have to, you know, then let the patient know if everything was all good with my investigation or if I need to, encourage them to learn about other options. And 
Um, so it's great that there are options out there for sure. And then there's always a second review with me or, you know, um, the other technicians within Flowell. And we basically make sure you got all your questions answered at the doctor call, see if you want another general overview or if you have any specific questions. And then we talk about the thermography follow-up. And um, we have a, a really generous VIP program that if you get scheduled on the follow-up call, you get a discount going forward. It's up to 20% off your scan. Let's see what else here. Some, some cancer patients use thermography to monitor their treatments. So sometimes we have patients who come to us, they already know they have cancer and they want to safely monitor whatever methods they're choosing to do. You know, some patients have come back every month, some come every three months, some come every six months. It just depends on their goals with their doctor and their priorities. Um, but it's a great safe screening tool to do that. Uh, let's see. So again, when you're thriving, you're going to be reducing heat in the body from one scan to the next and also improving circulation. So I have patients ask me all the time, what are the ideal colors to see in this image? You know, I see red. Does that mean I have cancer in my armpits? <laughs> um, and the answer to that is, is most likely no, but it could be a sign that you need to detox, that you're not sweating enough. It also could be how you acclimated, um, which means we leave the room for 10 minutes, you get naked, and basically you allow the heat that your clothing was holding onto your skin to dissipate. And then I always instruct uh, patients and so do my technicians to keep the arms away from the body so th the armpit area and the breast area can cool down. But we don't know to what degree patients do that. So it, it could be that they didn't acclimate well. That's why there's heat there. But so often when we see red hot armpits, Dr. Huxtable and I encourage patients to do different things uh, for detoxing, like getting into infrared sauna, working on the circulation through exercise, Beamer, cryotherapy. There's so many things that you can do for detoxing. But when patients follow through with these tips from one scan to the next, we see improved heat signatures. The littlest things like considering what deodorant you wear or not wearing tight bras, not wearing bras with underwire, um, all those things can really impact your health. Guys with belts, I see really, really tight belt marks on guys all the time. Um, and it's my theory that it's because men don't have hips to hold up their pants. So they literally are squeezing the lives out of them, themselves and impacting their lower abdomen, their reproductive organs with tight belts. So there's so much we can learn from these scans. Um, Dr. Huxtable, is there anything else you'd like to share with uh, everybody about thriving? Oh, yeah, no, we, I mean, we go, we do a lot with diet because Basically, you know, you want to get your nutrition from, from your food. You want, you want to get your body balance from your food. But there's so many choices people that make that we're able to find through thermography and talk about that they don't even think about. They don't even think like about wearing tight bras or, or, uh, or not sweating. or it's, It just gives us a, a way to, to get a conversation going with the patient about their their diet, their their habits, their disciplines, and how to improve them and how to, to help the patient really learn about how to take care of themselves. So that's why we use it a lot. We use it for many, many, many different reasons. And those are some of the ones that um, people who really are not committed to doing a lot can can get a lot from um, a thermography gone over by somebody who understands what it's telling us, what it's telling us about. Thermography is a powerful motivator to do what you already know that you probably should be doing. <laughs> yeah, that's putting it very succinctly. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, Right. So here's, um, here's another patient who, you know, years ago, she said I could 
I could share her images with everybody and you can see um, she's thriving, decre decreased sinus inflammation. Um, let's see, right image was follow up for the abdomen. You know, you can see this red in her abdomen decreasing from one scan to the next. That means what she's doing is working, keep it up and, you know, see what else you can in incorporate. Um, slight decrease in oral inflammation. You know, most of us, most of us always have room for improvements, it seems. Well, um, I want to thank everybody, Dr. Huxtable, Elizabeth, Marlene's for hosting, Eva for coming on. Thank you all so much for attending. Um, and uh, as a thank you, I wanted to offer $50 off to new patients. If you sign up for a thermography scan before the end of day tomorrow, and you can go ahead and book on my site, flowwell.org to schedule. There's the event code uh, where you could get $50 off. And I didn't want to disclude any of my VIP patients who might be on tonight. So just they get a, a great discount on their next scan, more than $50 off for most of them. Um, so if you're a VIP patient, please just shoot me a text and I'm going to go ahead and discount your next schedule scan, $25 off. And then to book with Dr. Huxtable, we've got her email address down below and her phone number. Um, she offers $150 discounted thermography consultation for my patients, and it's a very thorough con consultation. It's an hour long, and I, you know, you learn so much. And as Dr. Huxville mentioned before, sometimes it's just a conversation starter, the thermography, and really figuring out where people need assistance and, um, what can really get them thriving, which is the whole point of this presentation tonight. And I just want to say to everybody, I have so much gratitude for you being on and taking time out of your busy lives to come and learn about what we had to say tonight. So thank you so very much, everybody, for attending. Thank you. Thanks, Elizabeth. Thank you for doing it for us. That was really sweet. Appreciate it. Oh, yes, any time that we get to have uh, both of you here with us. It's always an absolute pleasure. And so um, for, for those of you, um, we are going to have both of these lovely presenters back in October. So uh, keep an eye out on our uh, class calendar page um, on our website for more information. Yes, October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, but we like to call it Breast Health Awareness Month. Exactly. Breast I'm sure we'll be talking about that. <laughs> Yay. So it'll be um even even further um discussion of this um wonderful um medical thermography tool and um in in more of a a, a zoned in health topic. Sounds, Sounds 